means that on the sunny side of the spacecraft, a warm up to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. feet per second velocity. On the shadow side of the, of the command ship, to minus 280 degrees, and so that they don't boil Rest away. Altitude 123 miles. Body sand go, the S-4B is looking great. All right, we're just in uh, tent here, looks good on board. So they don't fry on one side and freeze on the other. They set up a circular motion of the spacecraft. One revolution uh, per hour so that it turns at about the rate of the minute hand of a clock. Keeps, one's, uh, keeps the temperature balanced between the two sides. Say again. We're getting some small... Understand the small, small yaw oscillations, 10? Negative high frequency vibrations. Oh, I saw. Yaw is a motion In from five side... Minutes, we still have to go, 10. Yaw is a motion from side to side. And if it were severe, it uh, could be quite critical. There's no, uh, no indication it is severe. It's a slight yaw motion. According to our calculations, the engine should have shut down now. Uh, Dan Houston in the blind uh, at cutoff up uh, telemetry IU to accept. Seco. engine cut off. We confirm the cut off. And so that third Roger, stage copy. has done the job. They're on the way to the moon. And we should believe my Delta VC is minus point six. Roger, minus point six on the Delta VC. That's beautiful. Yes, he's back, Daddy. And, uh, Charlie, we got an O2 full high in light in the middle of the burn here, which we can't account for. Stand by, uh, John. At this point, if anything went wrong, they can go out to the moon, circle the moon, and come back home without firing another rocket, except to position themselves for landing. They are now on a trajectory which will carry them within the moon's gravitational pull, with perhaps with perhaps one or two mid-course corrections of a very small amount. Uh, we think that uh, cabin pressure regs uh, kicked in there for that O2 flow, uh, John. They just went out and the snow started to drop snow, so it looks like we're in good shape. Okay, fine. You're beginning to fade out. Uh, we think we'll be losing you through the redstone here in a, uh, about 30 seconds. Hawaii at 2 plus 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> Blind, uh, everything we got looks nominal. You're on your way. The communications are still through the ground tracking stations for Earth orbital flight. Uh, they say they're going to lose communication. They will very briefly uh, while the spacecraft gets out behind all of the shadows of the Earth and then become, comes into direct this contact with the huge 85-foot uh, high-gain antennas placed uh, equidistant three points around the Earth at uh, Madrid, Spain, at Goldstone, California, and at Honeysuckle in Australia near Canberra. They will establish contact there uh, in time for that transposition and docking maneuver, which comes at 348. Transposition at 348, docking at 358, and our first color transmissions, we hope, at that time. This trouble they were talking about, uh, the yawing, we heard no more about that, so it apparently was not severe. An O2 flow uh, does not concern, uh, is 
probably concerned with environmental control system. Could be concerned with the radiators they had a little trouble with earlier. Don't know about that. But at any rate, they didn't seem too concerned about it. And nearly all of the uh, command uh, systems, uh, they have redundancy, as they say, a backup system. And as you heard, they're perfectly calm. There doesn't seem to be anything, a constraint in the flight. As I was saying earlier, if anything did go wrong as far as propulsion systems go, however, they would go right on out to the moon. They'd be caught by the moon's gravity, thrown around, and then they'd have so much momentum, they'd come out of moon's gravity and back toward uh, the Earth again on a free trajectory for a re-entry. Uh, however, they expect, of course, to slow down enough to go into lunar orbit and then to do their lunar module exercises and come back finally on Saturday. That is, start back on Saturday. That, that's a 4B third stage is now, they finished with that, don't need it anymore. They'll be separating from it when this transition and docking is completed. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. And so, Apollo 10 is on the way to the moon, man's second voyage to that distant planet. They'll reach there on Wednesday. Now, the next item of business, transposition and docking. Let's let Bill Stout and Leo Krupp at North American Rockwell and Downey tell us how that's going to take place. Well, Walter, it's certainly these first few hours that are so hectic in the spacecraft, the critical movements, one after another, only minutes apart, it seems. Earth orbit, then heading out for the moon, now transposition and docking breaking the command and service module away from the Saturn 4B and the LEM and then bringing them back together. How touchy is it, Leo, and what do they do? Well, it's a very simple maneuver, Bill, and it's a really a pilot's maneuver. Uh, John Young will separate the two vehicles by actuating a switch in the cockpit, which separates the command service module from the S4B and at the same time jettisons the, the uh, spacecraft lunar adapter panels or the garage doors that are housing the, the lunar module. John then flies the command service module out ahead about uh, 50 feet when he stops, does a 180 degree pitch maneuver. He pulls out ahead. That's right, he's moving out ahead now very slowly at about eight tenths of a foot per second and he'll move out till he's about 55 feet out in front of the S4B and LEM combination. At that time he'll do a 180 degree pitch maneuver so he can turn around and look back at the S4B and, and the LEM. He does this pitch maneuver very slowly, about two-tenths of a degree per second, and as he's doing this, he'll be watching in his rendezvous window, waiting for the, the LEM and the S4B to come into sight. He's really turning uh, head over heels, all the way around, looking back toward the, the LEM and the Saturn and toward Earth. Hmm? That's right, this is a, a half loop, if you, if you like, and uh, this will put him in position where he'll be looking back directly at the at the limb and in position to move in for his docking. And of course, if all goes well, this is going to be the first live color television transmission we'll see on this mission. It should be a remarkable series of shots. As he gets close to his 180 de or his 180 degree pitch, he'll be watching in his rendezvous window for the S4B to come into sight. As you can see, it's coming in now. When it gets about to the center of the window, John will stop his pitch rate. He'll then final line the vehicle using the, the docking target that's on the lunar module. He'll then fly the command service module back in toward the S4B and the LAM at about 0.25 feet per second, a very slow closing rate. You say slow, Leo. How slow is that in uh, the kind of speed we're used to, miles per hour? Well, that's about uh, two-tenths of a mile per hour. It's a very slow rate because of structural considerations. We don't want to come in too fast. It's really incredible when you think that while both of these are flying through space at about 25,000 miles per hour, they're able to close on each other at such a tiny rate of increase.